Yeah. <laughs> I don't really Hi, Chris. Can you hear us? And you have one for yourself? Yeah. Just going to give one to their chair. Hello. Just testing. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was that road they were proposing that road that they oh, switched so over there because that's what I was Yeah, it was because there's the uh, there's that like I don't know, I don't know. 
And she will be there in the public area. Right, ready to go. Everybody here on your side. All right. Well, uh, good evening and welcome everybody. I'll ask at this point that we stand and uh, take the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, and justice for all. So good evening, everybody. This is uh, the January 4th meeting of the South Berwick Planning Board. Uh, before we get into more of the formal items, I'd like to welcome the planning board from the town of South Berwick. Uh, my name is Greg. I'm the chair here. Greg Zinter, the chair of the planning board here. We'll go down here. I, I know that you uh, know this lady down here. But for those that don't know, if I could just have you introduce yourself, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Hannah Bonin. I'm from the Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission. So I will be working with both the towns of Berwick and South Berwick on this project and other projects you guys may have. I'm Bill Hull, Planning Board, South Berwick. Hershey Hershkop, she, her pronouns, Planning Board. Zach Noble, Planning Board. Jenny McCabe, Town Code Enforcement Officer for South Berwick and Town Planner. Uh, Amy Aker, Administrative District. Sir, John Gannarelli. I'm on the planning board for Berwick. Matthew Scott Henry, planning board for Berwick. Jerry Graybill, planning board for Berwick. Michael LaRue, chair of the planning board in Berwick. Irish Garfield, board enforcement for Berwick. I'm Dave Andreessen. I'm uh, the code enforcement and planning technician. I also used to be on the planning board. Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, I know this is an official meeting for us. I would probably imagine from here, whatever decision that we come to tonight will most likely end up going back to you folks for some conversation. And you'll probably follow up one way or the other with us in terms of what your intentions are. 
uh, as it pertains to this particular conversation. So it is a joint hearing, a joint meeting more or less. Uh, we're going to be hearing tonight from a gentleman uh, who has submitted an application. By our terminology, we refer to it as MSB 22003. Uh, that's one item we're going to be uh, discussing tonight. But before we get into that, uh, I'd just like to uh, do some housekeeping items here. We went through the introductions, uh, but I'm going to go back to the agenda to get through a few items. Are there any members here in the uh, public here in this room that would like to make a comment? Seeing no comment here, are there any individuals on Zoom uh, that would like to make a comment? No. Okay, seeing none. Uh, so the next item is I'm going to ask for approval uh, the full of the December 7th, 2022 minutes. So I have a motion. I, I make a motion that we approve the December 7th, 2022 minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Been seconded. Uh, and is there any discussion? Okay, now I'm going to just step back and ask uh, Chris ask that you take part in this. So we are going to have to do a roll call vote because you're participating via Zoom tonight. Um, and so if we could, and I'm also going to designate you uh, for an active role in tonight's conversation for all of the business for us. Uh, you're going to be probably with us for quite some time in a full. Uh, make sure that you're aware and, and, and clear on that. So yes. I'm going to for a roll call vote for December 7th, 2022. I'm going to go to you, Chris. Aye. Okay. I'm going to go to you, Bill. Aye. Okay. Greg is aye. 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 Okay. The motion's unanimous. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> uh, just a notation for the records uh, December 21st, 2022, meeting was canceled. There doesn't need to be a formal action on that. Just a notation uh, in the binder. Uh, the next item under new business, there's a whole host of ordinance uh, issues. And uh, you may recall, we discussed this a while back about having some uh, changes to the subdivision and other associated land use ordinances. Uh, however, I'm going to ask that that particular item right now uh, be tabled until either at some point we'll take it off the table at the end of the meeting or we'll put it on and untable it at the next meeting. I think tonight between old business and our conversation when we get to the uh, uh, MS4 stuff uh, is gonna probably consume quite a bit of time. So do I have a motion to table the ordinance amendment discussion at this point? No move. Okay, but move, seconded, second. second. Uh, gonna do roll call, any discussion? Okay, uh, uh, roll call, Christine. Aye. Here you go. Aye. 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 Great, Aye. it's unanimous. So with that being said, we're gonna go right to old business and we're going to uh, re-invite uh, Ken Wood, I believe, correct, from yes. SR Engineering uh, to discuss with us sketch plan review of MSP 22003, Sam Villa Estates subdivision. And so uh, we heard from him briefly at our last meeting. We tabled it, requested this meeting, and here we are today. So if there are no questions from this board or this board, we can turn it over to, to Ken and move on. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Happy New Year, everybody. We as well. Mr. Chair and Madam Supper of Planning Board, thank you for hosting the joint meeting with Erwin. Uh, with me tonight, Carol Mick is here and John Toad from Mick Construction. Uh, of course, my thanks in that straight now that I'm thinking of what's going on this week. Uh, we've been before this board in the past several times on this project, starting way back in 2019. Actually, in uh, September 18th of 2019, the, the board at that time voted to accept our sketch plan. I have that sketch plan with me. That sketch plan showed 37 lots, um, and we were moving forward with preliminary plan. But on our end, there was some issues with right title and interest for some of the roads. Uh, they were all controlled by Carol Mick, uh, but under different entities. And by the time we straightened the entities out and proved we had sufficient right title and interest on all the roads, all the private roads, our uh, sketch plan approval had lapsed. So since then, we've actually moved to doing the work for preliminary plan. We have a, had a pre-app with DEP. We've had a pre-app with the Army Corps. We've straightened out any environmental questions. We had a IFNW survey the rabbit scat to see if there were cottontails. There are not. We've done a black racer survey with IFNW. There are no black racer concerns. 
we did a spotted and landings turtle survey with Stantec, and there were no uh, turtle concerns other than finding one painted turtle. So I'm really back before you seeking approval of my sketch plan so we can go forward with preliminary plan before this board and with DPP. Um, this is the, can everyone see this? All right. This is a sketch plan which uh, we're proposing. It's a collective subdivision. This is in the R3 zone. It's map 13, lot 17, 17A, and 100. It's about 175 acres. Uh, when you do the net density, can you just call out which one you're looking at in case I want to take a Which plan? Which which page you're on? I am on page well, uh, one point one. Yeah, my vision is oh, that good. I can see it as well here. Yeah. I just want to try and follow me here. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, when you do the net density calcs, um, you end up with about sixty-eight acres, which but in the uh, zone with an 80,000 square foot lot requirement, puts us at 35 lots. That's the maximum number of lots that we could, we're allowed to put by zoning on this cluster. Um, so we designed it as a cluster with 35 lots. Let me back up a minute because it's similar to. I should have prefaced with this. I apologize. <clears throat> There is an existing subdivision called Meadow Pond Estates off Knights Pond Road that Carol and Mick Construction developed. Uh, there's phase one, which was in this plan, Knights Pond Road is here. There's phase one, which was a clustered uh, development. And then there's phase two. So phase one, phase two of Meadow Pond Estates is a similar cluster development to what we're proposing for phase three. The lots are about, some are a little less than an acre, some are a little more than an acre. The ordinance allows 20,000 square foot lots. These lots would all be on on-site individual wastewater systems and municipal water. Mr. Chair, yeah. can I interrupt Mr. Yeah. Wood just for a second? And just let the Burwick Planning Board and Burwick staff know that you guys actually have a copy of every single plan in your binder if you want to look at it there too. Um, the cluster subdivision results in about 8,800 square feet of wetland impact, all for the road crossings. Um, according to your ordinance, and we had worked with David Galbraith on this when he was also doing your reviews, we're also required to do a conventional subdivision plan for a year. This is what a conventional subdivision would look like with the 35 lots. There's no rate waiver requirements requested in that those roads meet your design standards for horizontal vertical curvature. There's no um, dead end cul-de-sacs. I believe your ordinance limits those to 600 square, uh, 600 linear feet. Uh, the conventional subdivision, which is not something we prefer, um, would result in about 28,000 square feet of wetland impact. The reason we don't prefer a conventional subdivision are a couple of reasons. Our roads are longer. Um, our utilities, namely water runs, would be longer. We do have more wetland impacts. The lots are larger in area, so they don't really replicate Metal Pond 1 and Metal Pond 2, the previous plans I showed you. Um, and there's really no open space. So our preference is to have the boards approve our cluster subdivision and sketch plan so we can move forward. I think Jen mentioned maybe before the meeting started. I did have a conversation with Dennis Plant, the fire chief. I believe he also spoke with the fire chief in Berwick. Um, I, there are copies of that email and I think Jen can read to email those out. He had a couple suggestions, which we don't have any issue with. Uh, one is providing Knox boxes on the road. We had proposed a gate with a Knox box uh, at the end of Industry Drive. So all the residential traffic. Thank you. Yeah, so everybody has a copy of that. Yeah. So one of the issues on access was we would prefer to keep our residential traffic separate from the industry drive commercial traffic. I don't believe the residents of Meadow Pond 1 or Meadow Pond 2 would prefer a through road from Route 4 to Knights Pond. So we had proposed 
uh, and also based on uh, a traffic analysis done by a consultant tool company that we would gate it with a NUX box. I believe both fire chiefs agree to that as long as both towns have access with their keys for the mod spot, which isn't a problem to us. The other suggestion that Dennis had, uh, and I believe that the fire chief himself, Ed Burrow, also had it, was to locate a hydrant on the other side of the gate, which would provide firefighting capacity industry drive or to any tank of trucks that needed to fill up, and we don't have a problem with that. So, in summary, I'd like you to approve my sketch plan. We have all the environmental issues resolved. We have comments from the fire and police chief. Other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions any of you have. So um, I'm a little older than him sometimes, so I might not be remembering this well, but last spring, I, I distinctly remember that we asked for the primary entrance to the site to be off, industry, uh, be off Route 4 in the industry drive because we felt this would have a, the traffic coming in through the two existing cluster subdivisions would have a big impact on people there. Um, I did read the traffic report. I read all the other reports. And and I, I read through our notes and it it the idea of a lockbox and a gate didn't seem to pop up till much later. And so um, I'm wondering why that changed. I, I believe it popped up later, or she is because the board at the spring meeting, I think it was the April or May meeting, had asked for a traffic analysis, right? Which we did. And Sewell also recommended separating the residential traffic from the commercial traffic. But, Are you suggesting that they recommended that on industry drive? I thought not. They did. Yeah, right. right. Well, I have the notch box on industry. So, but you have a gate there. We yes. I, we never contemplated a gate, as far as I recall. Are you agreeing with me or disagree? I, I'm completely agreeing with you. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not that old. Maybe, maybe that's okay. Maybe I'm not following you. I, I, my recollection is we did not want to have all this traffic impact Meadow. What is it? Pond Estates. Meadow Pond Estates, and have everybody use that as their primary entrance. We felt that was a burden on the homeowners there, so we asked that actually the primary entrance be through Industry Drive. So would you? But now it seems to be there's a change and a and a. A, a gate has been has appeared, which uh, it, the first mention I found is October 13th. Um, I don't remember it being discussed originally, and maybe I missed it. Um, but I I just I'm a little uncomfortable with that because I thought that was going to be the way into this 35 unit development. So are you suggesting any gate, or that there's a gate? I, between... I I thought that would be the primary entrance. So okay, no I, gate. I understand, but if it's a primary entrance, right? Are you suggesting that we control the traffic with signage? I'm not suggesting uh, anything. Or that the road's open all the way through. That I'm suggesting that the road be open all the way through this so that people come off of Route 4 to enter this development and not go through the other two. Which, I, from what I see in the back here, is there's some agreement with, I assume, people who are homeowners there. So, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So, and, and they did show up at some point, a, a big group of them who represented the Homeowner Association. And I believe that was also their particular wish. Now, you could, of course, meet the code and there's nothing we can do about this, but that is my recollection of what we had asked for. If the board decides they'd like to do that, I'd just like to get a traffic consultant on board with it. I mean, if the board said to me, Ken, we want the road open, Right. Well, approved the sketch plan conditionally. Well, it, I probably wouldn't have an issue with that, and, but I'd want them to weigh in. Right, but and you know, it wasn't just the road open. I mean, I've yeah, been down that road, and it's it's you know, it's a mess. It's not a mess. Sorry, I don't mean to say that. It's industrial, yes. right? And um, it doesn't feel like you're entering somebody's neighborhood or going down a little residential road. And I don't know what to do about that, but it did sort of get raised as, well, how do we solve that problem? Yeah. So I don't know if that means there would be some kind of alternate route for industry or something else. And I thought your traffic report actually talked about that. So, so I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I'm just I'm just throwing out what I remember and what I think might be a better solution for everybody, all the people who already live there. Mm -hmm. I just want to I just want to back up a little bit and ask for your confirmation on a couple of things because we have. Oh, I just want to ask for some clarifications because uh, we we heard that a prior board heard this back in 2019. And that was approved at the time. 
And so the question would be, well, why are we back as scheduling? The time elapsed before they could get the preliminary plan to us. So basically they have to start over number one. And I'm really just saying this for those here and those on you know Zoom. And so then back in uh, one of the questions I had that I looked into over the past couple of weeks when we got this information is back in uh, May or April, one of those two meetings, there was conversations with another gentleman really referencing, well, you know, which led to some confusion about uh, under a traditional subdivision, you know, we can only get 17, but if we get this waiver for a road length, now we can do 35. And then at the last meeting, uh, it kind of took a, a little bit of a different turn. I was expecting to hear uh, last then, you know, at the last meeting and then hear, you know, that a waiver was going to be needed. But the reality is a waiver is not needed because you've redone and, and you've kind of retooled the development. Now, right. so that no waivers are needed. So therefore, uh, would, you know, no, I just want to make sure everyone's aware of that because that was a question that I had about where, how did we get from all the, this waiver request to now no waivers are needed and it's going to be a 35 lot subdivision because prior, you know, if we didn't grant the road waiver request, it would have been like 20, you know, so, but, but anyway, but we're, we're, we're here and the density with the road redone is such that you're allowed 35 and no waiver requests. That's correct. Okay. And so, um, so that's why we're here. I do recall Hershey uh, and I'll, I'll be perhaps a little bit differently. There was some concern about the access and traffic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, cause adding 35 homes and all the associated people with that's quite a bit more, you know, people and, and cars. I think my recollection without going back and looking at it may be slightly different in the sense of, I thought the conversation was put a gate between the old and the new and make them come in strictly oh. off of route four with no through way. Now I'm not saying I would agree with that because again, it comes down to the ordinances and what we have to review and how we do that. But I wanna say that was part of the conversation. So we did say we're gonna need a whole host of these DEPs and you know, all the yes. IFW, you did that. You got the traffic study, um, which now resulted in the gate being put kind of between whatever road and industry drive which, uh, on the line yes. to prevent people from coming in, um, which still leads to increased traffic, you know, coming in through Meadow Pond and, you know, one of the larger concerns that I have is I think we're going to want to talk about it some more. What, if anything, we can do about it? I don't know, but there's a lot of kids out there. Um, and adding 37 more homes with kids, I just get concerned about the, the traffic flow. You know, I, I live on a residential street or a cul-de-sac, and I see people coming in and out pretty fast. Um, so... This was a 2019. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yes. So you what kind of reverted to that one then? Uh, two less lots. Yeah. Because in the meantime, yeah. we had done the high intensity soil survey. Right. Oh, you did do one because I yeah. saw a reference in here that, oh, no, that was the wetland delineation. Right. You haven't quite done that yet, from what I understand. What? Wetland? No, the wetland delineation and a high intensity soil survey. Okay. Uh, I saw the high intensity, but it, Hershey, didn't we see something that said the wetland had not been done? Yeah. No. Yeah. Our, your um, archipelago. Archipelago. October 14, 2022. Yeah, I have not reviewed wetland delineation or other similar information he, that would only be included within an application. He just means he hasn't reviewed what we did. For oh, okay. What you're going to have to do anyway. And we've done, to, okay. we've done the delineation, the shows on the plan, and it's referenced. He just that. hasn't, he hasn't reviewed it. For Michael Moe has hadn't reviewed it. Yeah, he meant he didn't go out in the field and re review it. He had our plans. Ah. Michael Morris was asked by the attorney on the project, Sandy Day, who had had several discussions with David Galbraith to address the possibility of permitting the wetland impacts. That's what I want to see. So one of the things I would add as we talk about the gate, I would ask for some consideration. I think we're going to want to probably talk about it some more depending on where that gate discussion goes probably some other type of traffic calming measure. And say, for example, we say no no to the gate, right? Because we want people to be able to come in both sides. Are there 
speed bumps, narrowing of the roads, uh, you know, all the uh, sidewalks that can, you know, which can reduce uh, traffic to slow it down. What are those other traffic calming measures that could be put in to prevent speeding mm -hmm. and try to reduce the amount of cut throughs? Yeah. Uh, I think those are items that I would want to review as part of the preliminary, if you know. It's a it's a town road that way. What is um, the one that comes in from Meadowbrook right. Estates is a town road. Are they all town roads? Yes. Does that mean the town is really how old it takes? No, to town, that belongs to Berwick. The pet town of Berwick. Is it one of them? What was that? Does the town have the power or the right to put in a gate if it wanted to? Mm -hmm. no. We can only beat them to a condition on that. You guys can condition it. Right. The town can't do it without a condition. Right. The town would just go and pop a gate in there. No, I, I get that. Anybody condition the application to right. do that. Yes. Okay. Yep. I have a question, Chair. Would that need to come from the public works director too and have a conversation with him about that? About what? Putting a gate. A gate. Yeah. Also, what you were saying about the traffic. Yeah. Well, I think if it goes to if we put this to preliminary, I want to be clear to make sure that I'm understanding. This is just this is just a sketch. There's yeah, still ample right. opportunity to have further conversations about. What we're talking about here the project is not approved we're going to approve a concept traditional so, or cluster essentially mr chair if yeah I may, go ahead please and hannah if i may correct me if i'm wrong but all all the sketch plan does is really offer the applicant feedback right. from the board so that when they come for a preliminary all your concerns are met if they can be met mm -hmm. or he mr wood at that time would explain why they can't be met yeah then i'm not hearing any waiver requests at this point. Yep. And so I think it comes down to the discussion on the traffic, which we can say approve it as cluster or traditional, you know, whatever the board wants to go in whatever direction. But I am concerned about the traffic. And I'm going to want to personally, I would ask for some consideration, discussion on traffic calming measures, a gate. And I really would want to talk to um, yeah, the, yeah, and the police, you know, because again, you know, you're, you have a residential zone in South Berwick that on some type of proposal would be cut off in the middle. So now you're saying to our police and fire <clears throat> in an emergency, I get it to Knox Fox, you know, you have to get out, open it up, open it up, you know, that prevents a faster response to our own residents. Well, and also, I believe. The Berwick Planning Board is here because a good chunk of that road is, you know, in Berwick, and they have their own set yeah. of standards of what. Can, I mean, this might be a new point. I mean, what can and cannot be built, and how that would work on their end. So I'd really like to hear yeah. while we're talking about the road, what they think about this. Yeah. Any any thoughts? Can I, Mike? Can I ask a question? Go go right ahead. There's are there any residences or any homes going into Berwick that are, that are being built? No. No, the project's totally in South Berwick with the section of the connecting road. The connecting road, which is 500 feet, correct? Yeah. yeah. So here's here's some development. Right. Here's the town line, mm -hmm. and here's industry on the drive. And there's 500 feet of industry drive. E yes, I'd say that. Yeah. That doesn't have any residences on it at all. That's correct. Um, it's currently paved. Uh, uh, not that portion of no, 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 it's pretty gutted, no, and you'd have to get up to standards. Let's say yeah. it's about 500 feet of industry drive on that portion of the road where there are no residences before you get to the timeline. Okay, yeah, right now that road basically goes right next to where that fire hydrant is, right next to the retect that wet pond. It well, it doesn't go all the way up to that, but it goes basically to the town line. Yeah, I think the cul de sac, yeah. Been yeah, it's really rough. <laughs> Ken, can I just ask a question? Are you putting in a gate right there to prevent any road improvement to industry drive? No. No. Oh, I, I was I'm only putting a I was only suggesting a gate to separate traffic. Okay. I mean, if you I think Mr. Chair, if you said to me and, and you pretty much uh, mentioned it, you know, come back to us with some options for either a gate here or a gate 
here yeah. on no gate and cop and traffic calming uh, items, I would go back to Sewell and say, hey, we're going to preliminary plan, hopefully. Can you give me some ideas that we can discuss with the board and then the board could see fit to either adopt them, not adopt them, or maybe send them out to an outside review. Gate, no gate, yep. no gate, traffic calming. Uh, you might want us to look at, I mean, the, the 35 homes, single family, detached residential generates by the ITE about 9.9 .9 trips per day. So, but let's say 30, 37, let's 35, let's say we have 350 trips per day. Maybe you would also like me to ask, well, if there are no gates, what's the circulation? How many of these homes are going through metal pond estates? And how many are going up industry drive for loop pool? That might be something you'd like to consider. I would be looking for a list of options. Yeah. So and with the option outcomes, yeah. some of those that you mentioned, yeah. and other options that school would come up with. Fair enough. Um, I think that's a good suggestion. And with the option of no but, gate, I'd give you probably the okay. circulation. Yeah, but I'm just one member. So yeah. But I'd like to hear more from, from yes. Berlin too and what you're thinking. So I kind of have something that's uh, it's a slightly different topic, but um, there is a cement mixing plant like right over here. Northeast. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts of screening or sound deadening around that area? Well, I don't. Well, because I mean, I understand it's 500 feet, but I mean, if they're working there all day, I mean, if you're the lot 30, you're probably going to hear it all day. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's existing cover in here. I don't think we can actually go onto that property and screen it. But the concrete. No, I'm not saying the concrete. I'm saying that the road, like where where right, basically on the line, the Berwick. Is that right in here? Yeah. Yep. I mean, is vegetation in there now? Or is it all no, it's right? all grass, I'm pretty sure, right? We've walked no, that no. several times. Oh, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can approve it and then create a problem for you on the other end. Right. Too. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I would just, if I was going to be buying a house over there, I kind of want it, you know, separate from the industry area. So yes, if I there's can. some a distinct separation, so yeah. one, you could have some trees to screen, because I mean, that would help with sound yeah. a lot. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think that's... And, and and also, I, I mean, I haven't been there in a while, but as I remember, there's just big expanses of piles of dirt and piles of rocks and piles of wood. It's been getting moved. Uh, it? Okay. But it, but, yes. But, but, yes. Let's <laughs> give you guys a, okay. let's just go backwards for a second. Okay. If, yeah. if me and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they put another business in there. So Northern Pool and Spa. Yeah. Put a oh, building in there. Yeah. If you haven't been down there, you should. It's, it's neat down there. Yeah ready but it's neat um i had a conversation with the berwick town manager probably like a month ago on the phone about this um the applicant would need to bring the road up to town standard is my understanding from mr Bellissimo, their town manager and um there's a, there was a couple other things that he wanted you guys to review and look at so that's a great idea um that's why you're here so but um how so greg's trying to figure out from you guys how you feel about that gate that locked gate like i know how you feel about it so just say i don't like it i was gonna say i don't like it. you guys are i'd rather have it open yeah. and, and make that road set and make it to town standards i mean if the town if Bur if south berwick is going to use that and have municipal plow it I mean, then what? Where it's going to stop at our line, and then we have to plow the rest. I mean, is that how that's going to go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah. The other, the other concern is the danger of turning out of Industry Drive. It's a dangerous spot. State Road. Those are all things that we need to consider, and the Berwick Planning Board probably should consider it. Right. Well, that's what brought us to this, and yep. those were the concerns that we identified yep. back in April, May. And also, just on a more human scale. Um, it's going to be paved. I assume there are sidewalks, it looks like, on one side of the road. Yes. Yes, uh, sidewalks. You're not asking for, or thank God. Um, actually, it's a variance, not a way to lose. Is that right? What? A variance. Losing the sidewalks, which we struggled with before as people. But the sidewalk would have to extend out to Route 4, I would think, right? Mm, no. Yeah. No. Uh, it could end think... right, right at the, well, not at the gate, but at the, because that our we don't have a uh, because because so you're to get picked up by the school bus, you're going to stop right there. 
there's going to have to be some type of turnaround. There. Yeah, yeah. the school bus is going to come pick them up and turn around, well, or they're going to go, or they're going to walk the other way through the Meadow Pond Estates. So most likely, the school bus wouldn't be picking up South Road kids on an industry drive right. through Lake Road. Yeah. So that's something to consider as well with families going in there. So families just wouldn't be eligible to be picked up. By the no, they'd probably come yeah, through. Have to come they they come come in through the school bus. Yeah, most likely. So at the end there by the gate, you'd have to have some type of turnaround. Town line. The school bus can't can't cross the town line. They don't, they don't need to. We, they normally will just turn around like on York Woods Flip Road. Really? They, just, they have a turnaround right at the York South Road line. That would be a good question for the school department. We can. Isn't there no that. way to get into there without going into Berwick? Monorail. Well, I thought the pro, part of the problem is that there's no. Oh no, they're going to get there the road through road. the current road structure through yeah, the meadow road, 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 meadow pond. Yeah. Okay. So Meadows Pond, if you're not familiar, comes up Knight Pond Road. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so I think the question now is they're saying they don't want a gate. Uh, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And I'm saying I'm, saying I'm, I'm wondering kind of neither here nor there at this point. One of the reasons was um not mixing the residential with industrial traffic and what can you speak to that a little bit about what, what the problem is or what the concern is with Mixing the two, uh, really no more than I meant. I mean, industry industry drive has fairly heavy industrial exactly. traffic just due to the pines. I don't think it's a large generator, but it has traffic. Mm -hmm. And the okay. consultant felt that the preference would be to keep all the residential traffic through the residential it's subdivision. It'd be weird, yeah, it'd be weird yeah. driving, you know, like leaving your home and you'd be going to this sort of little area. Of you know, so, right, big trucks coming in and out and people not seeing it around things and well, you know, all that stuff. I suppose, but as a commuter, I yeah. think that would be a faster way to go in. It depends where you go. Right. Yeah. If you're going up, and if, if you're going to get through the floor, it's yeah, like, going, 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 going. It would be. So I don't, I think the like, cost benefit analysis of being able to access the development yeah. through that way would outweigh the, I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's right. a huge, right. Huge issue with mixing the two is just kind of a weird situation. Yeah, I mean, for someone traveling, as we said, Portsmouth, <laughs> Dover, Summersworth, you'd want to do that instead of doing. Wouldn't you want to buy that, that little strip of property right here? So it way. would involve you doing more road work than beyond. Well, we had planned on it. We always planned on it. Definitely, just all that. It's going to be so stated in the first group. Where's Ruth Ford? Ruth Ford is up here. Okay. 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 Yeah. Gonna, I've never been down. Yeah. These uh, are the right. last two lots on industry right. drive. Okay. I, but you're, it's, you're it's, emptying it's, out onto Ruth Ford eventually, correct? Right. Yes. Yeah. Industry what, drive goes to Ruth Ford. What is the speed limit in that area? Is that 55? That's. See, Under that's my concern. Well, I think DOD is going to have to weigh in. Right. Right. There you go. They're already weighing in. Well, when you go out to Mitch Pond, yeah, it's. It doesn't really matter. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Either yeah, one you traffic. go out to is going to have the same problem. I mean, there's already a current traffic study going on. Hang, hang on, one at a time. I'm losing track of everybody. What did, can you finish what you said, Bill? Uh, whether you go out to Knights Pond or, or out Industrial Drive, you're going to end up yeah, within fair like half yeah, mile right. of each other, right? Well, so, there's a current traffic study with this with the state on that road as we speak. There is. That, 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 that I've been that. meeting with the town manager on. I mean, there are okay. plenty of places that come on and off route yeah. there. Right? Well, I get several mean, accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nine miles in Berwick that has had many accidents in the past. Okay. And, um, yeah. So I think that's the thing that. The two cows. Yeah, remember, the, the, the speed limit is 55. Mm -hmm. The sight distance on route forward industry drives greater than 1,000 feet in either mm -hmm. direction, east yeah. or west. The recommended sight distance for a 55 mile an hour posted speed limit is. 550 feet. Yeah. So there's yeah. plenty of sight distance. Uh, but it's the busy road. road. You know, they are uh, yeah. extremely yeah. tall. I think she's given us the count. There's something like about 10,000 cows a day, 2013, 16, and 19. Between 9,800 and 10,000, 10, 2016, about 9720, 2019. That's the amount of traffic on the right. floor. Someone else from Berwick was going to say something. No? But we're certainly glad that the boards decide to we want to evaluate options at preliminary plan. We'd be more than happy to do it. Mr. Chair. Okay. 
I mean, for, I mean, as long as the road is up to standards for Berwick, I mean, there's not much we really do, but one thought is, is maybe having a turnaround right at the town line. Yeah. So yeah. that way there's there. access from, from municipal to turn around for plowing and if school bus, school bus or, you know, just. Anna, did you have anything that you wanted to offer on this? Well. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great question. Um, one comment, but I think that just got covered. The improvements to industry drive would have to be made regardless of if there's a gate, regardless of if we establish one way or the other as the primary or yeah, really the primary entrance, those improvements will have to be made regardless. Um other than that. I discussed with Jenny earlier about the waiver question um, that you had resolved. They no longer needed any waiver request. Um, other than that, I mean, I've kind of jumped in in the middle of this. So I've gotten as up to speed as I can from all of Dave's past memos, all the past communications and everything. Um, but the the gate the question of whether or not there's a gate, where it is. You have plenty of time to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, whatever whatever you approve as kind of the general conceptual plan, you're not saying the gate has to be in one place or another. So you have you have a long time to decide whether or not you want those specific things. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'm just gonna piggyback what she's saying and let um, both boards know that I had a lengthy um, conversation with Lee J. Feldman today about policy and procedure on this and what's to come. And um, we would, Greg, our uh, chair, our chair, would be looking for a letter yes. from the town of Berwick um, with the standards written out for us as well. So that when we do finalize this application, we can condition that portion, okay? Yeah. So I'll be honest with you, you know, at this point, if, if there's anything else from Berwick, because I know you're going to go back and talk about it. The question really for us tonight is conventional or clustered. And, you know, whether or not we want to approve the sketch plan. I don't see a reason why, other than what you've heard about the traffic concerns, and there are numerous traffic concerns. I think I, I can't see any reason why we would hold that back, that approval. Just a matter of traditional versus cluster. No, so I, I had a quick question, and I, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong project. But um, was a, were you thinking of handing over all of the open space to the Great Works Regional Land Trust and doing a meeting set up with them? Uh, I don't think I was thinking of anything. On that. Oh, okay. it's also great idea. One of the suggestions from IFNW was a great ticket program to her. So we might look at that. Great. Yeah, take a look at it. It's pretty interesting. It's on the IFNW website. I can send really? you yeah, be great. the, the contact it. info for it. It's uh, the reestablished habitat. Sure. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I can forward some information to Dan and Amy, and they can distribute it. Okay. I'm going to prevent people from doing anything else with all it. Yeah, of course, once it was designated as open yeah. space, too. But... Okay. I mean, I don't think we are against having a third party hold the open space. It might just be who's the best candidate. I've used great words before on a couple of subdivisions in your work. Great. So if the sketch plan is uh, approved tonight, they'd be clear enough to go to preliminary planning where you could just discuss in more detail. From my perspective, what I'm hearing more is the traffic concerns, I think is going to be a bigger issue during the sketch plan. Um, um, yeah, yeah, Zach, go right ahead. Uh, one question, and then it's as much because I'm so still somewhat new, but um, I'm hearing 35 units is what we're going with the proposal now, whether it's cluster or conventional. That's right. Okay. The But the document, this application had mentioned it in it 37. Is that what the original? I believe that's the, is that that the older pre, application. I don't know. I'm just looking at the date on it. It looks like it yeah. looks like it's 12 now, You know, I had an older application and I might have grouped it not. I think it's the original one that they then 
I was that except the date time. You can always approve the number. Yeah, as long that's as long as we're just all clear that thirty five is still on. Then that's good. Yeah, I could have. Where's the end? That's a matter. But while you're looking, so if it's moved to preliminary plan, and we'll get that, and then we'll have to have a full discussion about the completeness of the application. Six thirty seven. And then, what in there do we have the site walk? So that's after yeah, we um, find the application. Right. That's right. We'll go ahead and set up the public yeah. hearing so and block if we choose to. Okay. What? What? That's all. I, I have one more quick question. Yeah. Oh, no, you're, you're right. I was wrong. I put the I carried the thirty-seven over, but it should be thirty-five. Thank you. That's um, sorry, yours. And the application says: Is any portion within two hundred fifty feet of a high water mark of a pond, river, or salt water body is the wet pond a detention pond? Is it a man-made pond? Is that why we're not counting that? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Chris, I want to go to you, give you an opportunity to speak on this. I'm sorry. I no, it's fine. I um you have addressed everything that I was going to address, so that's been satisfying. Um, my question is if we approve the uh sketch plan and we move to preliminary, are we able to change in our conversation after that point the number of units? No. Now, so we're 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 taking an overall sketch, and that number is is not changing after tonight if we approve the sketch. Because that's driven by the ordinance calculation. That's Got just it. a straight up calculation that yep. we really can't we can't alter that. Well, All right. right. That was my yeah. only question. That's one of the actions. Um, okay. Yes. If, if something, for instance, is discovered later, like suddenly I don't know a black racer snakes, like a whole nest of them show up, then. And they were working like something else happens that was sort of unusual. Then you would change. You'd have to, right? Yeah, the number of units can be changed, right? But the board cannot dictate that change in the be, way. Like the the net density calculations say that they can have thirty five lots. Right. So they can have thirty five lots. Right. Something comes up, and they're like, "Oh no, there's actually a gigantic wetland crater right here that we didn't right. know about." Well, like lower the number tree. of lots, but it. Right. This is not holding you to that. So number. this just has their large order. Yeah, easy. You, yep. 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 Easy yep. Yeah, they lost a lot. That's so the nice sketch density. plan just offers right. ordinance. So then it really gives them the direction for mm -hmm. moving forward yes. in terms of traditional versus conventional. Mm -hmm. Here are general concerns. <laughs> anything anything from Berwick on your end? I do. Oh God! What's what's our way ahead? How are we going to interact with South Berwick and through? Are, are we going to vote on it? Things I just I I know the answer. I just want you to lay it out. <laughs> uh, so so next steps for the Berwick Planning Board is to at I don't know if you have it on tomorrow's agenda or if it's for the next meeting. On some meeting night on the agenda, you will discuss this and decide whether or not you want to waive your rights to be part of the review um, or if you want to stay involved. Uh, you, If you choose to waive your rights, essentially you're saying, take it from there. As long as you're improving that portion of the road to the borough standards, we're good. Keep us in the loop, but we will not be involved from this point forward. Um, if you choose to stay involved, we would continue to have joint meetings and you would be um, involved in the rest of the approval process. Now there's <clears throat> there's no homes that are being built in Berwick. Yes. So we're just looking at the 500 feet of the road. Yes. Essentially. Yes. Now, 10 years from now, you can have somebody come in there and say they want to put in some homes in Berwick, then it will go to the Berwick Planning Board. Yes. So the, you guys, the Berwick Planning Board, need to look at whether or not you want to stay involved, you want to continue going to these meetings, knowing that. Only thing that they're going to do is improve the road, not going to put any houses in Berwick, or you can ask me to go to these meetings with Hannah and um, say, you know, save your guys a, you know, a Wednesday night out. Um, either way, I'm completely fine doing it. Um, I, I don't want to make more work for the planning board, so. Is is there one more issue? Would there be signage on the report, or no, or coming into the development, naming the development? Yeah, is there going to be some like you know Sandville Estate sign that's going to end up somewhere? 
And you're like have, on the South Berwick yeah. side and the on Route Four. Yeah, on the, why would you want that? <laughs> so people can find it. What are you about that? Uh, they're going to plug in GPS. It's going to take them to some other. <laughs> and, and as far as any yeah. houses, okay, in Berwick, they, they don't have this path. Was that? As far yeah. as any homes in Berwick, any future homes, they would not be on this portion of the project. Right, right. Path. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just, I'm letting our, you know, the Berwick board know. This is pretty cut and dry. This is just 500 feet of a road. As long as the road standards are all in place, then I think that you can allow me or Hannah or Lee J to go to these meetings and just monitor what's going on and just take it from there. Unless you guys want to come out here to these meetings. <laughs> so, really good. I have a, a question for Hannah yeah. because James. Uh, gave me some very extensive instructions today, which were to, um, he's under the impression that these applicants need to come before our board at, at our offices so that our public can have their voiced opinions on this. Is that it? And if so, at what point should these people come before us? That's a great question. They, they should, they should, you should start thinking about doing it now. Is the requirement because we're in 500 feet of the town line that we need to come before? Because you're doing it's James's impression that you, uh, James was more. Uh, yeah, actually, I know James. It's his impression that because you're doing any work on our side of the town line that you need to come before our site planning board. And he has, he has expressed to me he has a, a very strong concern about the residential traffic going through the industrial park, which is. In direct <laughs> conflict with you, Percy. Sorry. Like no, it's um, okay. I mean, I, but you I, know, I, his concern is we do have mixers, yeah. small vehicles. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking families, 35 families, which are going to have an experienced drivers who are not familiar necessarily with. Um, you know, I grew up in the construction world, so I know they can't stop on a dime. These kids may not. Uh, these families may not. It. So there's that concern yeah, no, for no, James totally, as well, which I totally appreciate that. Might yeah. have been part of the driving force for the gate too. It's is keeping people that don't necessarily understand how uh, an industrial park yeah. and the the equipment in an industrial park operates could potentially yeah. cause harm to these families. Um, and I think that's something that he wanted our board to be able to assess, and that might be part of where the gate issue came in. Yeah, I want to. No, I, can, I totally there. get it. Okay. So I think you guys need to we talk about it, follow your process and then let us know where you land. Where you land on that, and we'll try to work with you on that as far as our ordinances allow us to. I just want to get the time everybody get these guys just to keep yeah, everybody yeah. going smoothly. Yeah. So before, hold on, yeah. Mister, <laughs> Mister Chair, if I might, yeah. Hannah. Um, I had a conversation with James and he wasn't even going to do a joint meeting. So as the staff planner over there, you might want to have a conversation with him before Ken schedules that. That's not typical of what the Berwick um, town would do. And honestly, that would be a waste of Ken's time if that wasn't the way it's supposed to go for policy and procedure. So I would talk to James and I would talk to Lee J and then maybe schedule Mr. Wood on your end. That's just my advice. I agree with everything that James is saying, but when I talked to him, he was like, oh, we'll just write a letter and everything will be fine. So that's way different than what he told me. And that was about a month ago. Yeah. Um, I can actually look up the date in the conversation if you need to, just so that he's on the same page with his staff and with you and with our applicants. So we're not wasting time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything explicitly that says you need to go in front of the Berber board or not. Since there isn't any residential construction or anything, if the whole subdivision was split, that'd be a different story. Since it's just the road, I don't know if there's anything one way or another. So I will talk. With I you would like to have some here. further follow up with the fire chief, who would hopefully have a follow up with Berwick fire chief regarding that case that Irish was talking about. Yeah. Particularly when it comes to you know police fire and EMS response, um, it's kind of a distance from your station. Um, and if they were thinking, when I put the gate there, we're not going to have that, perhaps that level of accidents or interactions and traffic incidents. I'd like to kind of have some more of their background thought on sure. why they're agreeing by putting a gate there. The other thing is, too, 
um, when you think of life safety and you think of, okay, we're going to put this road in, and we've talked about this before, we're going to put this road in, and we're going to lock it, we're going to gate it, whatever that looks like, or we're not, it's just as important for people to be able to get out as the fire trucks to get in. So a lot of times we sit here and say, well, the, yeah. you know, emergency personnel need to get in. People need to get out too. And that, that was something that had always come up because of life safety measures. You know, North Berwick is going to be close to respond to that. South Berwick is going to be close to respond to it. Berwick Fire Station is a little bit further out. Hmm. All right. An underpass? Is that yeah. <laughs> water? Anything from Berwick at this point? No. We're good folks. Last this project we had in both towns was the Outlook Golf Course. <laughs> wow. Well, he was my client number two, to be clear. The clubhouse was divided by the town line. There were a lot of discussion on a cave because back then, mm -hmm. South Burrow was dry. Mm -hmm. We wanted to serve liquor on the Berwick side of the clubhouse, but on mm -hmm. the South Burrow side, how we wanted to separate. So, Ben, I think you heard a lot from us tonight are concerns about traffic. I think there's going to need to definitely be. A higher level review, further analysis on that. Uh, other than that, you know, traditional or clustered? Uh, and is there a motion to uh, accept the sketch plan as traditional or a cluster? What's the board want to do? You're, you're lucky we've talked about the road and we haven't focused on anything else. <laughs> I make a motion that we accept the cluster plan on the current review of the courts. Been moved, seconded by Zach uh, for just, uh, any further conversation. On uh, that, Chris, I'll just look to you. Anything further? Okay, nope. we'll take a all vote then. Chris, we'll start with you. All in favor? Well, Aye. go ahead, Chris. Go Aye. 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 Okay, motion is unanimous and uh, the uh, cluster subdivision concept, concept has been approved. You've heard our concerns and we'll kind of also wait to hear back from you folks too. And if you want some of us at one of your meetings, happy to do that too. Schedule if it works. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Good all. So we will move to a preliminary plan. We'll come back with the application and some options on traffic. And as far as Berwick goes, I'm thinking I'm, I'm waiting to hear it. Yeah. You want me to come so I do have one question though, process related. How long do you think you're going to be before you get that into us? Is it going to be next meeting or sometime in February? Probably sometime in February. Most okay. of the materials put Maybe together good. because we were there, but probably yeah. sometime in February. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. By the time good. we can wrap it up. <laughs> Get my graphic study redone, and we'll have some more. Right. Well, we don't have to approve the, the preliminary right away. And it's not happy. No, we'll no, it. You, you, you hear, you heard us. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Thanks. Thank you. Folks from Berwick, thank you very much for attending. Appreciate it.
and the guest no, well, we're, 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 we you can put you can put restrictions. You can put weight limits. You can put all types. Of and they say that we're not simply going to have it. We're going to wait to see what they say. Don't march. No, we probably should not be. We probably should not be talking. Oh, so. Well, no, we're all here. All right, are we are ready to resume the meeting, Amy. Yes, yes, all right, next business, uh, next item under all business. We're going to spend some time tonight talking with Christy Rabasco regarding the letter that she sent to us on December 30th, 2022. For those that may remember, we had a meeting, I think, back in August where we were kind of given a general update and where things, the trajectory of where things were headed. Uh, and I'm going to, so Christy's going to get into some more detail on um, necessary in order to meet those MS4 uh, ordinance uh, requirements new changes come about. But I'm going to say before, before we get into that detail, wasn't that at that same meeting where we said, hey, uh, we wanted to have that joint meeting with some of the town councilors so that we can kind of get this thing moving and not have our own process and then send it off to them and then they do their process and it would become an overly burdensome. Uh, it's on your last. Um, here, you can have mine. You can look at this one. And so um, I guess we'll wait to kind of see where you're headed with yeah, your stuff. I'll, I'll give you, I'm going to give you an update on, yeah. on everything. I think the meeting you're talking the August meeting. Yeah. Was a, a a topic I'm going to give you an update. Those are on hold. Oh, was, okay. Actually, no, I was going to start. That was go ahead. <laughs> We're good. Can we leave now? Yeah, I'll say because I was supposed to go to talk to Greg tomorrow night about theirs. Oh, so, oh, we have we have 17 minutes left for you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Okay. So I have two mistakes in my packet. Oh, and and I have two pieces of candy for anybody that can find them. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I want candy. I want candy. Yeah. 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 Well, the first one is okay. changes required by six. Uh, Hershey, I'll be 22. Is that the first one? Because it's the wrong date. Yeah. Dark chocolate or? Oh, oh, you get it. I got a oh, oh, that's your own candy. I'll walk over. Yeah. Okay, there was one on my the other one you might not discover till. <laughs> well, I did read Anybody it, but I now say I don't remember. Okay. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I do remember seeing that one. Okay. Okay. Sandville. Very fast. And I have Sandville, and then nothing. No, I, I have access. But does it? This, you can oh. use my unit. Oh. We have Chris here that's going to go over. I know that was feeling bad. Well, since that's I think I can get it because I don't think, think you should get it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I know. Well, I was going to bring enough candy for everybody. No, man. All right, here we go. Okay, so yeah, thank you. So, Chris, my name is Christy Rabaska. And were you all at the um, August 17th meeting? That was when we had the LZ in 2003. And you were the. Yeah, yeah, I was on here. <laughs> so, I've been the stormwater consultant for the town for quite a few years now. Um, I had a couple of years that I wasn't your consultant, but um, since 2003, really, since the town became regulated for the stormwater district, it's quite a while. And um, so tonight we have three ordinance changes in front of you as a result of that stormwater permit. And um, one update on that August low impact development discussion that we had. So I'll talk about these three changes in a little bit, but on the Low impact development. So you'll remember that I, um, on, on August 17th, when I came in, um, the, work, the workshop was pretty brief. Actually, it was via Zoom also, mm -hmm. and it was pretty brief. It was just a half an hour, and it was some pretty dense material. Mm -hmm. So probably not enough time to go through it all. But um, so low impact development is, um, you know, 
basically this development that um, you're talking about off of Industry Drive and um, Meadow Pond Road, right? It's like for, that area is almost completely forested. Right? The low impact development, as you know, my version of, of it is when it rains on that, um, on that area, most of that rainwater is gonna stay um, on the property. It's gonna, a lot of it's gonna evaporate, transpirate, a lot of it is gonna infiltrate so most of the really light rainstorms, they're gonna stay um, on the property. But as soon as all those homes get onto the property, then you have all the impervious surfaces. There are gonna be pollutants that are gonna build up, fertilizers, all kinds of stuff. It's gonna run off faster, harder. Um, if you did not implement low impact development strategies. So the idea of low impact development is that whatever rain falls on that um, and whatever those habitats are and things, they're as, as unchanged as they can be. That like the natural environment kind of looks at that development the same way pre-development as it does post-development. Minimal impact, so low impact development is kind of the way to look. So it's a really broad concept and it's um, very, um, it's, it, there's a lot of creativity, these civil engineers that they have to, you know, figure out how to do that with stormwater runoff. And so, on that um, workshop that we had, we had been working for over a year on a model ordinance for low impact development because we knew that that change was coming. We knew that we were gonna have to implement standards at the town levels for all 30 regulated communities for low impact development. So we started working on it a year and a half ago. We got the model ordinance done last summer. Um, and then at that August 17th meeting, I kind of hit a few of the highlights of it for you. But we had to submit a, um, a document to the DEP saying what our intent was for um, low impact development. And we, we basically submitted the model ordinance concepts. So we submitted that in September. Um, Friends of Casco Bay commented on that when it went out for a Clean Water Act public comment. So DEP had to send it out because it's a Clean Water Act requirement. We sent it out. Friends of Casco Bay is a not for profit organization out of Portland. They commented for all 30 communities and they said um, that they didn't like it. They didn't think it went far enough. It needs to be much more stringent. Um, it needs to be for smaller sites. Um, it needs to be town-wide and there were a lot of comments. But the main DEP um, knows how controversial that's going to be <laughs> and they basically accepted the town's submittal without comment. So for low impact development, we have the model ordinance. That's kind of what we propose. That's what we think we're going to have to implement by 2024. We have a whole extra year on that one, June 30th. Is there any reason we can't stray through the model though? Well, we had to submit our intent to adopt standards. So we've listed out the standards in that document and we can provide it again. What standards we, you know, we thought were reasonable and appropriate based on the, the other, you know, other work I have done as a consultant for you guys. Um, so you, we can stray from it, but I believe if the process is a little unclear because we're kind of in new ground on on process for this permit, um, that if we want to stray from the model ordinance and make things less stringent than we submitted in September. Um, yeah, then we'd have to go back to DEP for Clean Water Act public comment again. But if we want to make it more stringent, yes, we can. Make so it's it not a model. Um, it's not, it's not a, a model plan in that it's a template. It's, it's a template. Yeah. It, but it's a. It's not a suggestion and a convenience. It's that this is what's been approved by DEP, and yeah. then we're going to have to use it because it's been approved by DEP. Because it's yeah. been approved by DEP. Okay. Without yeah. us changing. It. Okay. Without us gotcha. changing. It. So if we do want to change it, if you guys want me to come back and you want to do like a more detailed, you'll look like, oh, look, we have all the time in the world. Let's have Christy come back and really dig in to the low impact development standards that we're going to implement. I, I could do that next summer, you know, next Christmas when it, you know, mm -hmm. nobody else wants to come. <laughs> anyway, so we could dig into those standards and so you really get a good feeling. You're going to have to get a good feeling for them anyway by June 30th of 2024. Um, but we're on hold We're on hold for those for right now, mostly because even though the DEP approved them um, and it would seems like it would be more efficient to just, you know, get it all done now. Um, the, the, uh, the DEP has also decided to open up their state development, Chapter 500 standards statewide 
So they're embarking on a new stakeholder process. They're going to change development standards in the state pretty in a pretty significant way over the next 18 months to two years. And we want to see, my, my recommendation to the council is that you should wait and see how that chapter 500, those changes are going. Um, the actual text that the DEP said was, you know, we might in, in, we might incorporate some low impact development measures that you guys might want to incorporate into your own town standards. So it's on hold. Well, so the LID is 2024. Where is the DEP just starting their chapter 500 changes? Because I guess, okay, so is it on hold because you're recommending it, it gets put on hold or because the state is saying, hey, you don't need to adopt these by 2024 because we're going to do this that could screw everything else up that you've already done. They didn't actually say that in the letter, but they did that in the letter. Good interpretation, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> nice yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's my question. So it is my, it's, it, it's my recommendation as your consultant that you that you at, at least hold until the summer. This is what, if anything, they produce. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're they're probably not even going to have their first stakeholder meeting until March or April of this year. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll see then will be a schedule for how long it's going to take us. So then we're going to get into the same thing that we're in right now with the LD2003. Uh, yeah. You have all these wonderful things, but now we're changing it over here. So there's going to be somewhere along the line some legislative action that's going to help us and push that LID implementation out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so chapter 500 might do that. And yeah. then we might get another year yeah. and, you know, DEP would say, oh, we did such a good job with chapter 500 that, you know, the MS4s can rely on it. So you don't have to implement your own model ordinance. So that would be the best of all worlds. You don't have to. We can just incorporate chapter 500 by reference. Can, can we, use of two years. can we, back to the screening issue? Can we actually implement things that are strictly? Yes. Oh, okay. That's what I really. Think. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I would love to hear about that. You can this. always be more strict. Yes. You can always okay. be more so strict. So, kind, kind of sort of some good, good news on that. We have a little bit of time on that. We have some extra time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of good news, bad news. It would have been more efficient to, you know, have, have been able to do all of the ordinance changes at once. Okay. So, well, so we've got a little bit more time on that. So, so we have the MS4 time. stuff. I know it's a that was a lot. So I wanted to kind of get through that. So we're not talking about low impact development tonight. You know, we're not talking about the same stuff that we talked about in August. We're kind of talking about stuff that actually I think I came to talk to you about in um, April last year. I was not here at that meeting, yes. but I did read your memo. Okay, so I did. I did come in April. I gave you, a, uh, and I'll give you a little more of an understanding of what of what these ordinances are. So no, no presentation today, just um, walking you through the papers. So the letter talks about the three um, ordinance changes. And then the second page of the letter is, is what I told you about the low impact development for refresher. Mm -hmm. So I'll jump into the three Go pages. Yep. So um, this, I've, I've I've done this for a few communities now, and I, I like I like the way I did it for you guys here. I tried to divide these ordinance changes into concepts, um, and actually it worked out well for you guys because you have separate chapters for each mm -hmm. of the three kinds of changes that we're going to do. Some people are mixed, and then it's the state. Mm -hmm. So the first one is um, some uh, pro the proposed changes for Chapter ninety six, the non stormwater discharge um, ordinance. And um, this non stormwater discharge ordinance has been on the books since 2006. It's been regulated since 2003. This is a Clean Water Act requirement that you have this ordinance on the books. The ordinance says, do not dump things into our storm drain system. That's illegal. No pollutants in our storm drain system. You mean like car oil? Car oil, the paint, um, drywall, mix, like when people are washing out their paintbrushes, drywall. Um, they can't connect. There are sump pumps and with their washing machines and discharge that into the storm drain systems, lots, all that kind of stuff. They, no pollutants may go into your storm drain system. So here's a quick story. Remember last year at the bank? They were dumping the paint in Yes, the yes, yes. The bank? Not it happens all the time. 
because not everybody knows that those catch basins go out to the water bodies. They think they go to the sanitary sewer. Correct. Even so, why would you? Yeah, no, but that's just a good example of that's how people utilize those. Right. Scary. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of stuff happens all the time. So um, the code officer administers this um, ordinance. All 30 communities have these on the books. The change that we have to make is, is pretty straightforward. Um, the general permit just wants us to tweak a little bit of language to say that when we identify something like somebody dumping paint in, that has to cease and desist as expeditiously as possible, right? If that cease and desist. And then, and then the other thing is that um, if it were a connection, like from somebody's basement out to the storm drain system, and that we discovered through doing a plumbing inspection that that was illegal, um, they are only gonna get 60 days to fix it. Sometimes these have been dragging out in the state and so they want to make sure that they had a 60 day um, limit in there to correct any illicit connections. Generous. Okay. So, and it, we also know that it's very difficult to get um, a contractor sometimes these days. So there is um, also language in here to show that um, if they can't do it in 60 days for some reason, they can work with the code officer to come up with, and again, the word expeditious, an expeditious schedule to get that. Corrected. So, so that's the concept. Okay. So that's um, that kind of the introductory concept. So um, on page three of your packet is the actual red line strikeouts that I'm proposed for you. Um, and so the first two are from uh, the first the first changes are from section ninety six uh, two the definitions. And we just have the two definitions that we're going to make changes to. So I have um, underline and italics for the new text that's proposed, pretty straightforward. And then, you know, strike through for anything that's going to be deleted. So these two definitions, I'm actually just doing a little bit of cleanup here on definitions. Um, we just want to make sure that um, ordinance date, this, these, not the ordinance date, the permit, the general permit, it gets renewed every five years. Um, and that, uh, definitions a little bit dated. It's back from when we first became regulated in June 3rd, 2003. So I wanted to just make that sound a little more um, so we don't have to go in and amend it anymore. So including any amendment or any of those, so we're just going to reference our most recent permit. I have no question. That was very, very straightforward. I saw everyone straightforward, frankly, with the exception of that one that requires the inspections. That was more of a concern to me. There was that. I know I saw that. Um, in the next, the post construction? Yeah. The, it was the monitoring and the making sure that everything. I mean, I'm, done, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. You're jumping way ahead. Yeah, I'm going to say, but go back to what you <laughs> had to talk about. Is this too much detail? Should I, should I go more quickly through it? Or? No, okay, okay. This, this, this next is one. fine. I'm, well, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know you gave her your paper. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So I'm not even paying attention on this. <laughs> so glad it's because he didn't get me. That's why that's it. We missed it somewhere. Okay. So, okay. so um, the next definition is just cleaning up the definition of urbanized area. Yep. So then on the enforcement side, um, we have the text um, that we're adding in that the elimination of the stormwater discharges need to need to have that elimination needs to happen as expeditiously as possible. Questions, I presume. Nope. Um, and then on page four, um, we have item two, which is um, the, the part where we say, you know, if the elimination of the non stormwater discharge is not possible within 60 days of identification of the source, you know, then we have to make sure that they work with the code officer to get a schedule. She'll, she'll put a schedule in the notice of violation, but. And then, and then the last one is again. I'm just doing a little cleanup on statutory authority. Mm -hmm. So no question. That one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No, I'll explain. Thank you. So the next um, section is will affect Chapter 108, which is the post-construction stormwater management ordinance. And I like to think of that as the post-construction maintenance mm -hmm. ordinance, right? So 
um, the first one of these sites um, that we've had that triggers this is uh, Bittersweet Lane, the HOA mm -hmm. um, on Bittersweet Lane. Yep. They are re responsible for maintaining all of the rain gardens that are in those um, yards. Mm -hmm. And so they have, uh, as they, when they take that over, they will have to sign a maintenance agreement. Oh, we have Cass Lane also. Yep, yeah, we did that. One. Yeah, and we did Cass Lane. Um, so they also have stormwater infrastructure and, you know, these are like more complicated systems now and they have to be maintained or they won't function. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they can even be detrimental to the environment, like the bacteria can build up or, or you know, so they, they do need to be maintained. So that this ordinance has been on the books since 2009. And so we're making a couple of changes. One of them is just like on the illicit discharge piece. One of the changes is that if the HOA or the owner has to do maintenance on that system. They have to get it done within 60 days. They can't, people have been submitting annual reports, not in this town, but in other words, like, oh, we had to do maintenance, we didn't get to it. Oh, we have to do maintenance. Oh, we didn't get to it. So if we make the code, we get the 60 days coming in. That's on page six. And that's on page six. Yep, again, same with the deficiencies. So the text is a little different in this one. In, in this, um, so, right, pretty straightforward. And then let's see, we're also making, we also have a new definition here on the qualified post-construction stormwater inspector. So that's always been <clears throat> a, a, a thing. I'm it's a BCP it right certification you can get. I'm not looking at my phone, I'm reading the memo. Are you? Okay, good. <laughs> Oh. So there's an, a definition of a qualified inspector, and the new permit says that that these entities have to use a qualified inspector. Again, in many communities, the owners are just sending in a form that says, "Yeah, it's good." You know. So, so does that mean that the HOA president has to be certified? So the way that I have this structured now, the HOA, someone at the HOA, could be the post construction inspector. Some communities have a definition for qualified post-construction stormwater inspector that says, um, and you may not be associated with the property in any way as an owner or operator of the property. So that is an option I could build into this. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Um, that but I then they'll have to hire someone. So then you're causing them to. Say, but it is yeah. it's both ways. Yeah. What is the required? An annual inspection. Yeah. What happens? I'm going to hire someone. You think happy day? Get your way. He's going to pay for it. The town doesn't have to worry about it. But the town can't do that. The town's going to have to monitor it and look and, and enforce the compliance with it, collate this material, and then ultimately be responsible for the enforcement. Yes. So this is the one you know that. I have a I have a, a problem with that because here we are, we're talking about all these new developments going in. Metal Pond one, two have stormwater. This new one's gonna have stormwater. I don't remember exactly what. But they're gonna say oh, it was gonna be a town road, but I think there's gonna be an HOA there somehow. Mm -hmm. You know, I do think there's gonna need to at this point need to be some conversation because ultimately. The town is going to have to have some follow up and record keeping and maintenance. And oh, there'll be an impact. There needs to be an impact fee yeah. here associated with this. So that's the bigger impact fees. Yeah, we don't have we're, to, yeah. we've been talking, Jen, Jenny's been talking yeah, we, about the because, impact fees just in general. Because um, there is an impact, even if all the HOA is going to do it, wonderful. Right. Yeah. Someone at the town level still needs to maintain these records and ultimately report on it and follow up if something's yeah, not I mean, going right. The public right. works department has somebody who does that, but um, he also does other things outside of right. just that specific post. Right, but but we were talking about a development on kind of getting out of town. I forget what the name of it was. It was in that back squirrely area by the condos that were put in. And they were talking about, you know, all these filtration systems going in and it was like, you're putting it in and then the town's going to have to end up maintaining it, you know, and so that need, there really does need to be an impact fee. Well, we also, in, in light of the letter from the police department, also, we don't have impact fees for police or schools or, like Dover has impact fees for the, when you add 30, we added 39 units in Dover 
and there was an impact fee for police we had to pay for the fire department. Yeah, so the town has done that. Not just water. Have that. that. That's a huge policy level conversation right. for the council. Well, yeah, you've been talking to Tim, haven't you? Yeah. It's on the radar. Yeah. It is. So there but, is, but it's it's on the radar, but it's in close. Well, this is going to help prompt that along. I like yeah. it. Um, so I um, I uh, I have worked for the town for quite a while, and when Terry Oliver was the public works director for this town, um, he and I worked on developing a fee structure for um, this very thing, exactly what you're talking about. And I believe it is still in your code, but it is not been um, enforced or collected mm -hmm. in the past. But you do have a fee in here, and I'm I was looking to right. see if I could come up with that. that. Up. Really? Can't come yeah, up with I'd it like right now. It's okay. I'll, I'll help, send you I'll help look yeah. at that. Put that up too. It's, it's in there now. Yeah, I think we're going to want to look at. I that think it's one percent of the stormwater infrastructure um, you collect and keep in order to help with the tracking of this. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And the and, review. Yeah. I mean, maybe we That's do, right. and we just don't know it. Jen, would, or Jen, Jen, will be able to let us know how that. Yep. So I'll take I'll take that on and ask yep. her tomorrow mm -hmm. or the next week. Yeah, we'll... I can look at it. Yeah, just when my brain is it spinning from trying to remember how to go through this in a logical fashion. Of course. <laughs> oh, good. All right. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. um, but to also to your point, Greg, I think um, uh, the 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 third change that we're making that, that we're required to by the permit is that people can't just submit a piece of paper that says, "Oh, everything functions." They have to actually provide us with the qualified inspector's report. And most, I do, I review these for other communities, and most of these reports are pretty straightforward. They give you a real nice summary at the beginning that says everything's functioning as intended, no critical maintenance was needed, you know, at the, no immediate critical maintenance is needed at this time, you know, just minor, minor maintenance and upkeep, you know, or they'll list it. But see, well, we're going to need to keep track of that because again, you yep. can say the HOA has to maintain it or, or do the report, but then, oh, hey, we found a problem. Hey, town, it's your road. So who maintains yeah. the ownership of that infrastructure there? So ultimately, you're gonna, the town's going to be on the hook. So The town will only take over a road. They'll only take the right-of-way and anything within that right-of-way. So if there's any catch basins or anything, the town will be in charge of that. Anything outside of that right-of-way is the HOA. But if something happens within the HOA, outside of that right away that then interferes with the town so at the time of taking the town over they have to make sure that that's all settled so that if something does happen we're not up you know we're not up the creek mm -hmm. as a town because we took over that right of way yeah. um, Again, it's actually right. deeded to us yeah. and the hoa um actually gets it deeded from the developer to the hoa yeah okay. Again, i still think so depending on what level of ownership there there still makes even more case oh i agree that be my yeah. question is, yeah. is it, would it be for the HOA, would it be easier for them to just contract out as, a, as an HOA to a stormwater consultant to do all this work? Most of the time they do. They, they most of the time they do. Yeah, because that's what I, I mean, when you think of like Coal Lane is only one or two, yes. very small. Yes. Bittersweet is 24 of them. Yes. And that's a lot. It's a lot of work. They will have. Many of the landscaping companies are now becoming certified as post-construction oh, inspectors because yeah. then they can they are familiar with it. And when they're coming in, they know what plants to replace them with and they know, you know, what the right kind of bark mulch is to use. And as part of the maintenance, part of the going in with the back trucks and sucking these things out of the too. When um yeah, when they need it and when they're outside the town right away, yeah. When they're private, people have to do that. Parking lots, a lot of, you know, I um, just sent out 60 emails for um, the city of Biddeford last week, <laughs> telling everybody their their yeah. reports are all due. Yeah. And uh, and they're, you know so all of those commercial properties, they have to maintain their own catch basins with the mm -hmm. factor trucks and tree sweeping, and hmm. that's part of it. We do keep a spreadsheet of post, um, we do pre and post construction and information from the planning board that Christy had has had going on since she's been here. Yeah. And it will list like here's the new construction, um, you know, like uh, what is it that we just closed out? Cooling, yeah, completely got closed out because we went through the whole process. So now we know yearly. Well, did I have quarterly? I don't have quarterly. No, no. just yearly. Yep. I know that I'll be 
mean, to get that written. Yep. So she has to send a letter reminder. To them. Right. So we, I, I have that on my radar um, as helping out Jeff Doyle and Jay Redmond at Public Works. So there's some work on our end, but it's only one or two. Imagine if we had, you know, a half dozen yeah. to a dozen of these. That's a whole different discussion. Yeah, it does start to get complicated. And then you've got, so it wasn't just 60 emails. It, then it's, you know, three or four emails back and forth with each person, you know, oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Oh, we didn't do the maintenance. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no, here's me. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. Right. It doesn't just end there. Yeah, right. So it does. Yeah. So I agree. The impact fee is is big and it, it should be um, identified up front too as people are coming in. Yeah. Okay. We'll look for that and we'll. Okay. Oh, bring that to attention. So, any questions on the post construction piece? Those are the three changes. No. <laughs> I will let you guys have. You can uh, Thanks, but thank you. So, now you're on to the. the so, yeah, so I thought I'd move to page seven if that's okay. And these are the, this is a little, just a little more substantive than the um, two changes on the, on the first, the other two chapters. Um, so this will affect both the subdivision and the zoning ordinance. And um, the the general permit is requiring this is this is the one in April I gave a more detailed presentation on this, kind of a heads up. And council got a very brief summary also last year in February um, about these changes. So the, the way that the permit is our general permit is structured, it, it says that. We have to adopt the Chapter 500 state standards for erosion and sedimentation control. We have to bring those down from the state and we have to embed them into your ordinances somehow so that Gen can have enforcement capability over each and every technical standard. They're much more detailed and technical than the current language that you have now. The language you have in your ordinances now that I pulled for you to take a look at, it says things like, you know, erosion of soil and sedimentation of water courses shall be minimized by employing BMPs specified in a guidance manual. And that's from 2003. And that, that guidance manual is from 2003. Yeah. So it, most of the time you also say um, or latest revision, but I have updated that where I've seen it. So, so you're saying chapter 500. So with the LID, that there's that little squirrely issue there. How does that impact this one here? So this will also likely get become impacted. Yeah, like that that their updates when they're updating yeah. Chapter 500, they are likely not going to make Chapter 500 any less stringent than it is. So one of the things I thought would be easiest for you guys to do would be to just say, you know the. Erosion sedimentation control standards are hereby adopted by reference. So that's the quick language that I've got for you for red line strikeout. Some communities are um, bringing them down and adding them in as a new appendix, listing them all out, just basically pulling all that text. We reworded a little bit and we actually put it in a technical appendix to your zoning ordinance and your subdivision ordinance. What's the preference? I, I like, um, especially now that they came out with the fact that they're gonna they're gonna update chapter 500. I think adoption by reference will be a little cleaner and a little neater. Um, it'll also take us less work now so that if there are changes in the future, we can evaluate that as we go. Okay. Makes sense because then you'll have to monitor Changes if it's changed, you know, if you already have it referenced, you don't have to update your documents at all. So. Right, right, exactly. We would be going back in again in a year to, right. to change all those technical elements also. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've got it right it, here. I'm looking at it. Okay. It also makes it easier for the developers. Yeah. Now they know they all they he knows they they know they have to comply with chapter 500. So if your ordinance says, yeah, and, and we're gonna be helping to enforce that. They know that um, they don't have any new or different standards than what is already required at the state level. Cool. Okay. So there, you can keep going if you have. Uh, no, I think I, I was kind of just looking at my notes. I'll listen more. So okay. the question from here is: There's two bodies that are authorized to initiate the ordinance changes, but only one can adopt, and that's the the council. Okay. So my correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my question is. What is what's being asked of us? If, if, so if we're going to have to say, "Oh, hey, let's adopt these ordinance changes," right? 
now we have to go through our process. Yes. And then the council's got to go through the process. So it's, it's going to really just lengthen. I, I, I think from a process perspective, my preference would be to, hey, we reviewed this. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, we're asking the council, we reviewed this and attached our, our comments. Uh, let's see here, the, uh, what was it? 2022. No, the, the, the chapter 96. We recommend that they be adopted as presented. Yes. And then, you know, chapter uh, 108. Right. This presented more of a conversation and concern for the planning board. And while up here you have to adopt it, you should also consider the implementation of impact fees. Mm -hmm. And then chapter 121 and then uh, 140. Yep. Uh, we would recommend that you adopt it by reference. Yes, uh, as, as presented by yeah, reference. Yeah. And that way it gives it to them. We reviewed it, we yeah. looked at it, and it puts it right back where it needs to be because the impact fees is a policy conversation that they need to have. Yeah. And the other ones hate to say it, we don't have any really much say with that. Okay. But I do think they're looking for your recommendation. I do think yeah. that's why. Yeah. So, what I, so that would be my for you guys to yeah, give it. That would be my recommendation from here. Okay. And I'm happy to draft the letter as such. Can I? And, and we can send it to the council. So sure. go ahead. I just I have a suggestion for one amendment where you said we have an option of requiring that they hire a professional as opposed to doing it themselves. And I would I would ask that we add that. Mm -hmm. a, oh yes, that. to the post construction yes. one. Yes. Yes, yes I can pull that language. Yeah, yeah that's easy. And that what, what yeah. Greg said sounds great. So, but I'm still confused. Jenna, maybe help me help me understand. So, uh, Sandville. They're going to put in their school drainage. They're going to have the catch basins, everything up there. But the where does the HOA come in on that? Because the contractor developer is coming in, putting this stuff in, and now, oh, town road, yay, we accept it. Now it's our problem, the towns. Or can we say the HOA is responsible for that? I don't think we could. No, so the it HOA would, would only be responsible for whatever is not in the right of way. Which is nothing. No, no, they have no, detention they, they, they problems. They have their own, on their own Oh, the, okay, I, I'm thinking of catch basins and so stuff like that, yeah. Do clean, yeah. Right. Um, catch basins, we, we, we pay someone outside of the yeah. government to come in and do that yearly. We actually, Mr. Yeah. Chair, Go ahead. we actually have um, a situation like this going on in South Burke right now. And we'd be happy to share more information with you if you want it um, about here. the process because it's a private road now. And it's been a lengthy process to get it to where it is, and it's still not ready to go. And that's so that's the situation. Yeah. It's Bittersweet Lane. Yeah, twenty-five so units. Each one has their own little pool in the front of their home or the back, or however the situation is. So when we they want us to take the road over, we would take the road over only in the right of way, the structure that was built with the sidewalk to maintain. You know. Um, anything in within that right away, a catch basin set per se, there could be a couple other little structures. We would maintain that, which is okay. We're, we're okay doing that. But then outside of that, especially with bittersweet, because every home has something that the HOA is going to have to maintain. So, well, so there's really two parts to it. One, you have the HOA maintenance that someone's got to follow up on yes, it. There's so there's an impact that. fee there. But then there's also, oh, hey, we would love to take on this as a public road. And then there's the impact there. You know, again, you're adding to the storm so, drainage yeah. and the requirements they for. Do, they do pay property taxes. Well, they do. Yeah. But what happens yeah. is, is before we take that road over, a lot of things have to happen. It's it's a process. It's a oh, process. I know that. But so in order to take that over, we need to make sure that we're covering the town's infrastructure, I guess, by owning that road, knowing that the HOA is going to take care of what they need to take care of. That's why I was questioning. This HOA may decide to contract out because it's a lot. It's going to be a lot. The gentleman who is a, is the president understands this. We ha I have conversations with him. Um, he's well, not I'm, certified, right? I'm, he's not even close to being certified. What I'm saying, and my concern is, I, I get the property tax issue, but it's a different thing. Oh, we're collecting property taxes, and then someone's standing before the council saying, "Hey, I need more people to do this because I'm getting overwhelmed with everything." Well, and then it taxes. Oh my God! You want to do it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your property taxes change if it's a town road or yeah. if it's a, well, so then yeah. there isn't a change that would offset the cost of maintaining. Well, but they the built, but when you do a development, the point is they put in houses, but then take property tax. And so it's sort of a win for the town. Right. But, 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 but in essence, with an impact fee, at least they're getting something. Yeah. So this is what I during like. the development phase from the developer, how they add that into the cost of construction is up to them. This is what I've learned about the impact fee conversation here, Doug Berwick. Um, it's just education at this point. It's educating um, why you need them, what they are, what they're used for. It's an education yeah. piece right now, and that's where we're at. Yeah. Well, this is. We just want to add a lot of education to this, 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 yeah, this, this area. Well, this is why you want to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they request a letter from memo from you stating that a number number two, I don't care what it was, the post construction maintenance orders part, just put that in there. We also would like to see impact these suggestion of discussion starting. Yeah, because a lot of witness, well, you have to adopt it. Right. And we're going to make that change that what you suggested, which I think is good. Yeah. I think um, it'll be some retired engineer right. on that street who's decided. Yeah, but right. you also got to even sample 35 rows. You don't know what's going by the plan, you know. That's a, that's a lot. And so somebody moving into that development might just prefer here's my my fee or here's mm -hmm. my, my part to share in the contracts and services out. I just want to be careful because. Um, then goes an application from the plan. Yeah, yeah, we should be discussing. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you want to discuss like better suite or something that has I already understand. gone through and yeah. for some future some future development cluster development that'll have thirty five units would be a lot and so development yeah. impact these are and any future and future development coming into South Berwick mm -hmm. in the next year is going to by two thousand twenty four. So just to kind of go back to what we need to do tonight, then I think we heard from Hershey making it a requirement. I have no problem with that. I, I like that idea. Uh, is that a motion? Do we need a motion? Do we need a motion? But if we're going to send it to the council, she's amending it and then we're going to pass, yeah. we're going to make a motion to adopt what she's written. Okay. Mm -hmm. it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you probably want to see the, but you do need the motion to send it to the council. Right, right. right. Well, with the, right with the comments. Right. So we'll wait. Do you yeah. think it has this done by next meeting? Oh, yeah. And then we can just kind of do a. That's right. We can do it now. We can adopt it as amended. That's yeah. all. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And I then make, we'll send it to I the board. Make a motion, okay, <laughs> that we adopt the suggestions as presented, um, in your in the what do you want to call it? Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the December thirtieth, one as Take presented in the December thirtieth, twenty twenty two memo. Memo, thank yeah. you. And I would add that we ha have a add a commentary to each little phase that this one we see no issues adopt as, you it's know, presented, as presented. This one. 108, I think it was with the right. the amended the change to um and right. a qualified inspector has no, no right or title or ownership. Right. Well, I'm talking about the qualified inspector that right. you know, while it, it, it's apparent that this needs to be adopted and put into the code, we would caution the board, the council, and really seriously consider and having a discussion about impact fees. Okay. Right. So you can go ahead. It's gonna. This has to go in, but you really need to back it up and talk mm -hmm. about that. And then, as far as the sedimentation control goes, I think it was adopted and, and insert by reference. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We need to vote on the motion or second. Can you just Reverse. clarify your exact motion, just for the record? Can I see the piece of paper? The motion. That as discussed, we adopt the language to be changed in our ordinance in the memo submitted December 30th, 2022, with annotations in a separate cover letter. And, yeah, okay, in a separate cover letter. So one is adopted as presented, the first one. Yes. The next one is with an amendment to the stormwater control officer qualifications. And the third one is implemented as reference to section 500 
Um, and then in, I think it's part of the cover letter you would suggest, strongly suggest looking at impact fees mm -hmm. um, yeah. as a whole. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. Yeah, great job. I'll good. second that. Okay. That's great. Who's going to write the letter? I'm going to take a crack at it. If you want sure, to. Sure. Okay. Um, sure. Am I writing it? Well, I can do it. That, that's okay. a half a page letter. That goes real quick. Perfect. Okay. I write them every day. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So my last mistake was on page nine. Well, then there's a motion on the table. It's got a uh, the it. it's been right. it's been motioned. Yep. Did anybody second it? Did Chris, do you have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns? Nope, you've covered it. Okay, so it's been motioned. Did, was there a second? A second. Bill, okay, and no further conversation. Uh, roll call, Chris. Aye. Aye. Greg. Aye. Hershey. Aye. Aye. Great. Motion yeah, passes. Great. We'll get that all wrapped up. Awesome. Good. And we'll do a little quick and dirty letter and attach the memo and right. good to go. And that'll make it to the uh, second town council meeting. Hopefully. Yeah. Good. So they don't need it again. I'll send it. Oh, send it out. Yeah, it's just next, but I think approval approval that, that is great. Yeah, that's really, yeah, just um, send it to both of us. Yeah. Thank you, Chrissy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's listen. Uh, do we need to discuss tonight those or going back to the new business, the item we tabled, or can we put that off? We can table it. Yeah. Let's table that. Uh, we'll bring it up in a, unless it was quick. No. Okay. We'll table it. <laughs> Uh, to probably not next meeting, but the meeting after. I already got that too. That's fine. Can you motion it? Uh, well, it's tabled. Perfect. So you don't have to. Yeah, we'll just uh, you put it on. Well, it. you know your Robert's rules. Uh, yeah. Table so <laughs> for the first meeting in February? Uh, no, the motion was just to table it. But if you put it on the agenda, we'll take it off the table and we'll talk again. Okay. Um, so we can do that. Sure. Yeah. But what I was going to say is be careful putting a date on it yet. We have a few okay. things that are heavy. Yeah, yeah. So we'll so just, just gonna table, it. table it, but put it on for a reminder. If it doesn't work, take it off. Mm -hmm. That would be okay. my suggestion, just so we don't forget about it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, informational material. Uh, a reminder of the Joint Town Council and Planning Board workshop, cannabis licensing, yeah. solar farm ordinance, January seventeenth at six thirty p.m. Be there or be square. Uh, schedule the planning board training with SMPDC. What's that about? Um, I don't do you. Hey, I attended my mandatory training by the town. So, I so this is, yeah, this is something Tim had asked that we, we tried to. Let me tell you the quick backstory. Like ordinance specific type thing. Let me just, let me just tell you the quick backstory. We had um, SMPDC, James and uh, Lee J. Fleming come down to the town hall. Uh, to do some staff training um, because of this, you know, new staff in mm -hmm. different positions. Um, and the training they gave was really, really good and unique. And it was quick. It wasn't, it didn't take long, maybe mm -hmm. an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so our town manager has suggested that maybe we schedule a date for our planning board to meet with AJ and James and have that training as well. So is it looking the middle? Yeah. It's going to be more. It's going to be more okay. specific to us. Okay. So, looking to the future, then the meeting. I would really am not keen on having additional meetings. Yep. I'd like to keep it to a Wednesday. Could we look ahead and plan ahead and like say, hey, an hour of one of your meetings yeah. in March? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. That would be great. Yep. Cool. But out, we will get dates to you on that yep. and see what works. Great. Does anything that works on the agenda? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. All right, so we're good to that. We'll wait to hear from you then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any member comments? Chris, any comments? Um, just a point of inquiry uh, to Amy or Jenny. When do I need to get my binder back to your office? Um, so by Wednesday of next week. Okay, thank you. Is that that's all you need from me, right? Okay. Thank you. I'm really thank you. Um, what did become of Cornell? Right. Do you want to handle that? Oh well, I'm not going to get into detail. I think it's easy to say that the absences are excused probably for this month and next month as well. There's other things going on there. That's correct. But if you want information, you can contact them. Okay. 
I, no, I, I did have a I just conversation. Have and, left. Okay. No, no, he has not. He has indicated his interest, and then he was going to be here, and then very last minute, another issue cropped up, and it's going to take him away for a couple months. Mm -hmm. So uh, perfectly legit. He's excused. So we'll just rely on Chris. Okay. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be no worse for the work. But we have an alternate. Uh, you know, we're going to be dealing with some pretty heavy issues over the next couple of meetings. So. Uh, I have one comment, and I'm just going to bring it up again because I don't see it on here. But the joint meeting that was supposed to happen with you two and yeah. the town council, with I think at least, mm -hmm. you know, the they, appointed two, they appointed two people, new people though. It wasn't yeah, it originally was. there was two, and then they changed them after the last after the election, right? It was going to be was good. it was me and Hershey, but then it was Jeff and Mallory, Mallory. I think now, right? I don't think Mallory is. Really I think we just need to revisit that. What was that? I thought that was over the. Well, so back in August, oh, back in August, when we were having the meeting, we were getting hit with this stuff. Right. We were getting hit with the LID, and then there was something else. The LED. The comp plan. So there was the comp plan LE two thousand three, and yep. then these MS four things. And we said, you know, as a matter of expediency, right. we should just work together and really right. just keep our respective boards informed. But really, the reality is, we're we we're, we're really kind of just advisory. So we can come up with stuff and make recommendations and push it right to the council. And we don't have time to sit here and have public hearing after public hearing after public hearing, make a recommendation and they can go and do their public hearings on that. The reason the reason why I like doing jointly with well, that's what we're gonna do. Oh right. the reason why I like the joint is because you know we keep on sending stuff to them and then it just keeps on coming back to us and then we do another workshop. And just that keeps that on, workshop. You know, cannabis and solar, those two sound pretty familiar, right? Keep on sending them out and then yeah. they get kicked back. We try to Take another whack at it, send it to the council. Now we need a joint meeting. It would just be nice to get ahead of it so we don't have to. Yeah, I agree. Keep it. I think, everybody, way. I think everybody would agree with that. Yeah. I think we just need to get it going. Okay. As long as it's still on the radar. I, didn't know it. Out. I think policy and the procedures are slowly tightening up for both planning board and town council and trying to get, you know, it's a yeah. slow process that we're getting. Mm -hmm. But as far as the uh, LD 2003, that's kind of on hold now too. Frankly. Yeah. yeah. There's, well, it's going to be a series yeah, of amendments, right? So that's kind of on hold. This LID thing is kind of on hold. Yeah. So it's kind of lessened the need to, frankly, get together right away. But it's going to happen again at some point. Yeah. So in three years, we'll sit back yeah. and have the same question. <laughs> and then I'll we'll say, okay, remember that we run that booth. We haven't done anything. It sounds like bomb confusion. Oh, no, it's it's so funny. We need to see what? So boring. All right. Uh, okay, do adjourn. Nothing. Yeah. I make a motion. Okay. Uh, Chris? Yes. 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 No. Yes. Okay. <laughs>